Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fall 2020 Symposium. I'm Christopher Machalitis, here today with Peter Paleo, Joshua Clift, and Colin Sullivan. And we're going to be presenting our IX Blue GNSS receiver project. First and foremost, let's start off with the technical directors who have been helping us all semester. From IX Blue, we have Greg Morvent, who's a software engineer, Jean Baptiste Lecrambe, our research and development navigation solution manager, and Elliot Tadoldi, inertial navigation and GNSS research and development engineer. From URI, we have Jeremy Peacock, who is a 2019 graduate with a double major in computer engineering and computer science and a minor in Japanese. From the team on the left, we have Joshua Clift, pursuing electrical engineering and German degree. Me, Christopher Machalitis, a team leader, pursuing a computer engineering degree. Colin Sullivan, pursuing an electrical engineering degree, and Peter Paleo, pursuing a computer engineering degree. I'll talk about an overview of IX Blue. IX Blue is a global high tech company specializing in the design and manufacturing of advanced autonomous marine and photoatomic technologies. The group in house expertise includes innovative systems and solutions devoted to internal navigation, subsea positioning, underwater imaging as well as shipbuilding and test and simulation needs. Underpinned by its unique in-house technology, IX Blue offers turnkey solutions to its civil and defense customers to help them conduct their sea, land, and space operations with optimum efficiency and reliability. IX Blue is one of the first companies in the world to exploit, develop, and bring to the market the fiber optic gyroscope technology. It now stands out as a pioneer and recognized leader on the market. Resulting from over 30 years of research and development, the FOG is now considered to be the best gyroscope in the world. Its performance is generally deemed unlimited. This company offers a lot of resources to us, our team, and are easy to collaborate with. The motivation behind this project is something called the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS. This is an extremely accurate and cost-effective version of GPS that allows you to have a solution with up to two centimeters of accuracy. The amount of accuracy needed though is dependent upon your application. So say you're a naval vessel, you would need a much more precise uh, accuracy than a car driving down the street. Various forms exist um, all within their own form of accuracy. This is PPP, which is uh, precise point positioning. There is PPPRTK, which is a combination of that precise point positioning and real-time kinematics from a base station and then RTK, which is actual base station coordinate, um, which is the most accurate form. Moving in, this is a basic diagram showing how these signals are transmitted. So what um, iXBlue uses is the Galileo satellites, normal GPS, and GSM precision. Um, these satellites will give all of their data down to network control centers, um, and those will also transmit to a CAR GNSS receiver or any other receiver or that would be requesting the signal. Um, going deeper into these types of GNSS, the PPP is the least accurate. It has a very large amount of time delay. This is mainly based to only satellites. And then it also has a bit of um, integration into the loss that it would get from being that delay. Uh, the PPP RTK is more accurate, but it still includes this delay. Um, RTK is the most accurate. It requires base stations placed everywhere, which tend to get expensive. Um, and the newest form is PPP-AR. This is the ambiguity resolution. Um, it's a theoretical te technology currently in development along with our project, um, which uses a larger amount of satellites, but with these satellites being more readily available and also broadcast from the surrounding areas, and it negates the need for these expensive base stations, and it also negates the need for entry clients at a cost. The anticipated best outcome for this project is a GNSS receiver that utilizes precise point positioning software to quickly and reliably provide position data within the centimeter range. The final deliverables for this project include a GNSS receiver, any software and hardware documentation, a test strategy, and a final report. Several GSM modules were considered for this project. The Cutacell Mini PCLE GSM module was chosen mainly due to its LTE CAT4 capabilities, 
and the fact that the IMX6 board has a mini PCLE port, making integration of the GSM module into the design very easy. The 3D enclosure was designed using SolidWorks. The top and front facing walls were left open to allow easy access for troubleshooting and integrating new components. The 3D enclosure was printed on a 3D printer and currently houses the circuit boards for the design. The integration of the SD card is a vital part for this project. The SD card is serving as the onboard storage for the IMX6 board, and we are using an SD card because it allows for expandable storage and easy replication. Before the SD card can be understood by the IMX6 board, it must be partitioned using Gparted. At the beginning, 8 megabytes are left free. Then there is a 16 megabyte FAT16 file system that is labeled boot, activating the LBA flag. And then the rest of the SD card is in an, in an EXT4 file system labeled rootfs. Then the proper images and files will be loaded onto the SD card in their required partitions. Next, we'll talk about how we built the Linux OS and bootloader. So the Linux OS is an embedded Linux or system on chip module. Um, this is a performance focused application specifically oriented for the IMX6 hardware. Um, we created this using build root, which creates a user interface for the user to understand the functionality of the board better. Um, also, we had the bare box bootloader, which was a separate piece, but also included in build root. This creates a bootloader specific to the CPU's uh, boot protocol, which is a ARM Cortex A9. Um, and this allowed us also to use serial port access to see when there are errors in the boot. Um, then we also wired the IMX6 and its peripherals. Shown in the pictures above, there is the actual board itself um, assembled on top of the ESD safe sheet. And then there is also the schematic drawn that shows where all the connections goes. Um, so the IMX6 is wired using mainly the micro USB connections because we don't worry too much about latency with the amount of time it's going to take to receive these signals. Um, if we are to continue later on with lower latency signals, we are going to have to integrate with either serial port or USB-C connectors. And then going on to one of our risks that came about um, and is the most important with dealing with the IMX6, um, this is ESD or electrostatic discharge management. So the IMX6 is powered by a 12 volt system, but this system can always arc onto other parts of the board, causing a lot of damage to pieces that would otherwise be operating correctly. Um, and the way that we mitigated this is to use a quarter inch sheet of Lexan, which is electrostatic discharge safe, and it also is safe from chemicals. Um, it uses countersunk standoffs to lift the board from the surface, so nothing is touching the surface of this. And it also allows for a better connection to ground. Um, and then it also mounted all the exposed peripherals to this sheet using the standoffs, but leaving enough space so that they do not arc with the boards. Next, we'll talk about the economic impact for iXBlue. One of the main goals of iXBlue is to stay up to date with cutting edge technologies and innovations. As PPIR is anticipated to be one of the major next steps in localization technology, it is important for the company to be able to have its own expertise on the subject. This project will allow iXBlue to better understand the stakes of PPIR and thus help to keep it updating the products that iX blew off. Moving into the individual contributions, so far for this project, I have assisted it in the creation of the build materials, which has all the materials needed for the project, populated Taiga with tasks and subtasks, helped with the build root creation of the operating system, assisted in the design of the 3D enclosure with the mechanical engineer, partitioned the NSD card for use with the IMX6 board, so it will be able to be read, and loaded the necessary libraries onto the XD card the IMX6 to boot. So the creation of this build of materials is really important for phase one. It has all the materials that are needed to complete the project. So if the project wanted to be repeated, it can easily be repeated. I'm using Taiga to keep track of my project progression. Um, it helps find risks among other things that we need immediate attention or things that, you know, just need to get done. I've also assisted with the creation of the build root operating system and the 3D enclosure. Like I said, I had met with a mechanical engineer who helped create the 3D enclosure around our needs for this project. And lastly, the partitioning and loading of the SD card 
the SD card is going to be read by the board. It needs to be in a format that it can be understood. So all of the libraries and information that we need to get can be gotten. For future key technical accomplishments toward the anticipated best outcome, I am looking to code to easily process and understand the information collected by the board using the GNSS receiver. Um, I want to also design a graphical user interface that is will easily display the information collected by the board in a clear and concise manner. Um, continuing developing the operating system with all the patches necessary, such as updating all the libraries or getting new ones so everything would work well. Integrating a new GNSS chip that will come into phase three onto the IMX6 board. Continue to update Taiga and also research and understand GNSS and RTK software to be used. Next, you will be hearing the individual contributions from my colleague, Joshua Clift. Six for us to integrate all of our technologies later. Um, to explain these, so compiling the bill of materials for phase one, I everything is centered around the IMX6 to understand and utilize the intermediate frequencies given by the radio links. Um, and then we also use a GNSS chip or a GSM chip to complete the RTK GNSS evaluation. Um, finding all of these parts came along with drawing a complete model, which our team um, worked with the TDs to find. Um, I mounted the IMX6 on a quarter inch thick sheet of Lexan to make sure that it's ESD safe and that it has a stable working platform. Um, I populated Taiga with completed tasks and risks. I always, whenever we find risks, we put, uh, put them directly into Taiga so that they can be shown later. Um, I wired the circuit between the IMX6 and the per peripheral equipment. Um, I use AutoCAD to create all the schematics to make them clear and understandable. And then I also, as a final piece, created the build root loader and or the bear, build root OS and bear box loader to make sure that the later pieces of the project are much easier to develop. Finally, going on to our future technical accomplishments, um, this is specifically for me what I have been tasked with. Um, so I'm continuing to develop the OS, creating patches whenever necessary. This can include full rebuilds or only um, small updates to include more libraries or more features. Um, I will integrate the new GNSS chip that will come in phase three. So we are switching out the radio links chip for a more precise GNSS chip once we can accurately receive data from the radio links. Um, I will also continue update schematics to make sure that everything is shown. So I will make sure that we have more than just one layer. The IMX6 is actually a three layer or a three tiered board. Um, and I aim to have full schematics of each layer. Um, and then I will continue to update Tiger with our manuals and actions. And then I will provide assistance to the other engineers in the project for configuring the GNSS and RTK software. And up next, there's Colin Sullivan. Hello. My name is Colin Sullivan. I'm an electrical engineering major. The individual contributions I've made to this project include populating and maintaining the project Taiga page, updating and maintaining the project bill of materials, researching and assisting in the selection of the GSM module, assisting in the development of the operating system, and assisting in drafting and printing the 3D enclosure. I researched several GSM modules available on the market. Ultimately, a mini PCLE GSM chip was selected due to ease of integration on the IMX6 board. I'm also assisting in the development of the operating system, which is an embedded Linux system. The team is using BuildRoot design software to develop this operating system. Additionally, I'm assisting in drafting and printing a 3D enclosure for the design. Currently, the first draft of this design has been printed and we are continuing to make updates and refine the design as we progress. There are several future key technical accomplishments towards reaching this project's anticipated best outcome. These include updating the 3D enclosure, continuing to develop the operating system, preparing phase three hardware for design integration, and receiving data from the GNSS chip. The project Taiga page, the bill of materials, and project documentation will continue to be updated and maintained as the project progresses. GNSS and RTK software will continue to be researched and understood by this team to ensure the anticipated best outcome is achieved. The next presenter is Peter. Thank you. Hello, I will be introducing myself now. 
I am Peter Palaio, a computer engineering student. And for this project, my individual contributions were helped to compile the bill of materials, as this was a team effort to be completed by all of us. Worked with a mechanical engineer colleague to complete the 3D model where we use SolidWorks. Populate Taiga to, with complete tasks. Worked with our group to complete first OS build using build root and bootloader using Bearbox. We also partitioned the SD card to be bootable and hold the OS we created. The bill materials includes every item we've ever needed to complete this project and is very essential to anyone trying to recreate. When creating the 3D model, being able to work with a mechanical engineer to learn the 3D modeling skills and to have them help our team was a really fun and cool task. Creating the bootloader and OS is essential we make correctly, as this will make the rest of our project run a lot smoother and simpler. Partitioning the SD card includes using a program GPAR to create free space and partitions where needed. Then we would have to load specific pieces of the bootloader and the OS onto the spe specified partitions towards our anticipated best outcome. We will have to receive and implement iXBlue's source code, receive data from the GNSS chip, continue developing OS to fix any issues and take out any unnecessary steps, integrate new GNSS chip that will come in phase three onto the IMX6. Continue to update our Taiga with the project progression, research and understand GNSS and RTK software to be used. One of the last pieces of this presentation is the summary of our future team accomplishments. Um, so the main thing that we're looking for is the operational PPP GNS receiver. This is the full anticipated best outcome by April 2021. Um, next would be the NTRIP client uh, integration into BuildRoot software. So this would be a um, base station integration so that we can show how it accurately gets the readings from the ionosphere over the GSM chip. Um, this would be hopefully by February 2021. We are going to do the SSR corrections by February 2021. This is using the Radiolinks chip. Um, the PPP module, which is the evaluation of these GS or um, G GNSS corrections or GNSS um, so, uh, data, will come by January 2021, hopefully. And then completing the development of the IMX6 software in the bespoke Linux environment by January 2021. Progress made on the project so far would not have been possible had it not been for the invaluable support provided by both the IX Blue and URI technical directors. Our capstone team is greatly appreciative of their help, and we look forward to continuing to work together as the project progresses. Thank you.